Hot and cold arc containments have both been shown to improve data center efficiency. This video highlights some of the advantages and disadvantages of both methods using virtual facilities. In the first example, cool air is delivered into the floor void and then to the IT equipment via the floor grills. This arrangement has the disadvantage of allowing hot exhaust air from the IT equipment and the cool air to mix. We can create cabinet plots to better view the thermal state of our equipment. The overheat plot helps to visualize whether equipment within the cabinet is overheating or is at risk. The colors green, amber and red represent equipment that are within the acceptable borderline or the overheated stage respectively. This plot shows the three cabinets are above their thermal limit and the remaining cabinets are on the threshold of overheating. One solution could be to set up hot or cold out containment systems. In the cold out contained system, partitions are built to enclose both the floor grills and the equipment inlets. This is done to guide cool air supply through the floor grills directly to the IT equipment. This system also reduces the mixing of cool and exhaust air in the room, thereby improving the effectiveness of the cooling units. Applying the overheat plot clearly shows a large improvement in the thermal conditions of the equipment in the room. In the hot aisle contained system, the partitions enclose the hot aisle and the equipment outlets. This system is designed to direct the exhaust air back to the cooling units. In this example, a full ceiling is employed. The enclosure and the ACU inlets are all ducted to this full ceiling. This way, the supplied cool air travels through the floor grills and into the room and equipment freely. The exhaust air is contained in the enclosures and vented into the full ceiling where it can return to the cooling units without mixing with the cool air. Streamline plots better highlight the path traveled by the conditioned air. Once again, the thermal state of the equipment are all within the acceptable range and much better than the uncontained system. Looking at the temperature variation within the room, at a height of 1 meter off the floor, we see that within the uncontained system, mixing increases the air inlet temperature of some of the equipment, especially at the end of the aisles. The cold aisle contained system maintains a constant low temperature at the equipment's inlets. As a result, the cooling systems can be set to a higher temperature and still supply the equipment with air at safe operating temperatures. This saves energy and improves overall efficiency. Here, the air within the contained zones is much cooler than the surrounding areas. One disadvantage with cold aisle contained system is that the rest of the room is treated as a large hot air return plenum to the ACUs. The temperatures can become uncomfortably high for people within the holes. Furthermore, Special cooling measures need to be provided for equipment that do not fit within the hot aisle cold aisle arrangement. Other equipment also need to be evaluated for suitability of operating in elevated temperatures. Unlike the cold aisle containment configuration, the hot aisle system does not require any special consideration for non rack mounted equipment. As well as reducing the mixing of supply and exhaust air, Hot aisle containment configuration also increases efficiency by providing a net increase in the ACU return temperature. Increased return temperatures enable better heat exchange across the cooling coils and therefore increased efficiency of the cooling units. The hot aisle configuration also provides a greater availability of cold air to the equipment when compared to the cold aisle system. This means a greater resilience of the hole in a failure scenario. For example, if the ACUs in the hot aisle contained case fail, it will take longer for the equipment in the hall to start failing when compared to the cold aisle contained system. In the second case, we have a hall whereby a particular row of cabinets have thermal issues. As a quick solution, the facility manager decides to implement cold aisle containment on that specific row of cabinets. Once applied, it was noticed that the thermal issues have been solved locally but equipment in the adjacent row of cabinets were now overheating. So what has happened? Comparing the results, we see that in the uncontained case, exhaust air travels from the hot aisle around and into the cold aisles. This is particularly evident at the end of the aisles of the problematic row. The thermal issues arise mainly because of the mixing of the cool and exhaust air. Once again, the air at the inlet of the equipment is heated, thereby reducing its cooling capacity. In the contained case, the bottom cold aisle was enclosed, thereby preventing this mixing. Although this solves the initial thermal issues in the bottom aisles, new complications arise within the central aisles. We can change the property of the result plane to display the room's pressure distribution. The pressure behind the overheating row is higher in the enclosed case. 
This is because of a build-up of pressure within the enclosure. As a result, exhaust air is pushed back into the adjacent aisles, thereby increasing the internal recirculation within the cabinets. Recirculating exhaust air travels towards the equipment inlets, thereby increasing the inlet air temperature. The combination of these issues mean that the cooling capacity of the air supplied to the central aisle has been reduced. A possible solution for the thermal issues in the contained case could be to introduce blanking inside the cabinets. This will prevent the internal recirculating flow from returning to the equipment inlets. In this video, we've briefly highlighted the advantages and disadvantages of hot and cold aisle containment in data centers. Thank you for watching.